So we've seen how to, to get information and we've seen how to um, to update information if you refer to the uh, earlier videos for, um, for details on that. The next thing that we want to be able to do is to be able to create new information. So we want to be able to create a new customer record, say here, um, in accounts. Um, now that's very similar to the to the, the put uh, request that we saw earlier. So what we'll do is we'll create a new instance of a trading account feed entry. We're going to call it account. And with this, we're just going to prompt the user and um, give it to uh, to set a, a name for us. So we'll just say uh, console dot. Account name, and then we'll just say account dot name equals read like. So we're just literally taking the uh, then we straight from the uh, from the command line as entered by the user. Now, one thing that you have to be aware of when creating um, new resources uh, that you don't normally have to be aware of when get, uh, for other request types is that there may be certain properties which are mandatory. Um, now those properties will be exposed in the schema though as such they will have the SME is mandatory attribute set on them. Um, for full details on, uh, on the schema um, if you refer to the sagesdata.com website um, that will give you the, the full full rundown on uh, all of the different attribute types including the mandatory um, attribute as well. Um, here I happen to know that there is only one mandatory attribute so I'm just gonna gonna set, set it here um, hard-coded but typically in a real-world situation you would go off to them to the metadata to, to, to discover this and you'll actually see uh, find if you if you go and look at the uh, boilerplate code that was generated for us way back at the start and looked in the uh, the trading account feed entry type and if we looked at the in this case the customer supplier flag um, which is the only mandatory field you would see that the metadata on there tells you that it is, it is a mandatory field and must be stipulated um, so in this case accounts 50 cannot create uh, the trading account unless we tell it it's a customer or a supplier so if I just say it's going to be a customer um, and that's all there is to it where um, we need we've got all the information that we want to persist there was only the one mandatory field um, the, that may differ depending on the provider, so you should always go to go to the um, the schema and double check exactly what the the, the provider is expecting of you. Um, so now that we've got our, our trading account ready to be saved, let's just uh, generate a save. So uh, for this, we'll create a new SDATA URI. We'll call that URI. Um, oops, sorry, new. Right, and again, we're just going to call the uh, the helper method on here, the build local path. Um, so we're going to be talking to accounts fifty uh, within there. It's the GCM contract, the default data set. Uh, oops, um, and it's the trading accounts feed that we'll be dealing with. Um, we'll then create an SDA request. Uh, we'll call that request. The first parameter is always the uh, the URI. And then, as we saw with the put request, um, because we're actually saving information here, we need to give the instance of what's being saved. So we'll just pass in the instance of the account. Um, and then the request verb, which is a post, which is a create. So then we'll set the username and password again. And as I keep saying, we do not normally uh, hard code these sorts of things in, but it's fine for demo purposes. So it's just request.username equals manager and request.password equals an empty string. 
and then we'll send the request, so it's just request.send. And that's it, that's been submitted to um, to the feeds that will, that will have saved into, into account. So again, as, I've, as you'll have seen in the other examples, we'll just do a very simple uh, test here. Um, just seeing, is the status valid for verb? Uh, if it is, we'll just I'll put a message. Uh, it's successful. it failed. And I'll just put a, a, little, a little pause in here. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> so we'll just build and run that. So we'll get a prompt for a new name. Uh, we'll just call it uh, my new account. And press return. Create success, so that's that's pushed it through. If we go across now to uh, say 50 counts, uh, we were creating a customer. So if I just go into the customer list and force a force a refresh in there, we can see it there. there there's the new account that I've created. Just like any other account, <clears throat> obviously it has very um, Minimal details on because we didn't we didn't provide much. Uh, obviously, we could have given it um, contact details. We couldn't have given it. <coughs> we could have given it the um, registered address, email, so on and so forth. Um, all of the information which is supported by the um, by the adapter uh, by this by this uh, accounts fifty adapter. Uh, as I say, there that was a very basic uh, amount of information that we showed. So that's that's creations again, very simple. Uh, again, just a handful of lines of code to do it. Um, everything here that you, you've seen will work on any, re, any other resource kind. It's literally the difference is with the trading account feed entry. Um, that would just be, um, you know, a, a invoice feed entry, a, sorry, a sales invoice feed entry. It could be a, a purchase order feed entry, so on and so forth. There's anything which is supported by the adapter. All of those types were generated as boilerplate code. Um, we didn't have to worry about it, and we just had to write a handful of lines of code to, to do our particular uh, requested operation. Um, it's all very similar code that you, uh, as you'll have seen if you followed through the, the examples.